Hi everyone, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Um, I met my next guest uh, only a few years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago. I've always heard his name, Chris Johnson, always heard his name. And ever since I've met him, he has intrigued me in more ways than one. And when I started these interviews, he was the one I always wanted to interview, but it was like chasing the Yeti. It was really hard to pin him down. Uh, I'm going to pinch a line from uh, Mick Mercer, what Mick Mercer's wife said about him. And this applies to Chris as well. He has an annoying habit of doing anything he puts his hand to very well. And I mean, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. So anyway, everyone, Chris Johnson Sensei, welcome. Chris, well, uh, thank you very much. That's... Uh probably a very overly kind uh, introduction. Uh, it's very apt, very apt. And, and uh, Robert Mustard Sensei will back me up on that. Well, I have to say, I'm really honored to, be, uh, to finally be pinned down. Uh, you've kept some really incredible company on these uh, Keep the Flame Alive interviews or discussions. And I'm, I'm finally happy to be here. So, uh, you know, there's so much to, do, so much to talk about. But uh, firstly, uh, you're a school teacher? Yep, high school teacher for, wow, 31, 32 years now. Okay, uh, high school teacher. You're an Aikido teacher? Aikido teacher, I would say, for five years. Okay. Uh, really, since I started this dojo, separate dojo underneath uh, my own teacher, Kimeta Sensei, but prior to that, you know, spent 25 plus years with him. Mm -hmm. uh, you we'll, know, and we'll I mean, I... That. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that okay. later. All right. Um, and you're a translator and a publisher and a father of three daughters. Two. Two. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I always mistake Charmaine. She's so young. I always think of her as your daughter. Yeah, there you, there. there you go. There you go. Sorry, I had to yeah. get that one in. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, look, um, before we talk about the current, the current Chris Johnson, I want to go back a little bit. So your initial martial art was? I started uh, karate in mid-80s, 84, 83, uh, when I went to university. Um, you know, it was one of those things where they had the, the club days set up and you'd go around and you'd check out different clubs. And mm -hmm. uh, really, the only one I was interested in was karate. And I, I went, I saw it, they did a demonstration. The teacher kind of scared me a little bit. Uh, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to join this. And uh, none of my buddies joined. I joined on my own. Um, and, and he was a great teacher. Gary Legacy is his name. Still teaching uh, just outside of London, Ontario, in St. Thomas. Uh, great teacher, uh, full of spirit, full of, you know, uh, if I might throw a word out, full of budo. Mm. Really motivating character. Okay, we're, we're gonna come back to that word later. Yeah, good. And and then um, it was there an overlap between karate and aikido. Yeah. So I unfortunately I could only spend one year with him, and uh, I ended up doing karate for about twenty five years or so. Uh, when I moved back home from university to uh, to Toronto. Uh, he recommended another teacher to me, uh, Michael Chapman Sensei, uh, who, may he rest in peace, has passed away. Um, also, uh, incredible, incredible character. Um, in, a, in a bit of a different way, but still very motivating, uh, you know, really strong figure. Uh, his dojo shut down, and then I ended up uh, with the, the head of this group that I was training with, uh, Monty Guest. And I spent, you know, probably 15 years, 10 years with him directly. And, uh, and you went up to what level? I went up to fifth down with him. Fifth down. Okay. So then what made you go into Aikido? Well, so uh, I was with Charmaine. Uh, we were moving, and I said to him, listen, you know, is there somebody you could recommend? I'm moving to the like a few towns over Hamilton. Uh, is there somebody you could recommend? 
So he recommended, you know, teacher A. And I went and I thought, no, nah, it's just not, I, I, it, nothing grabbed me. You know, I wasn't, I didn't see myself in the dojo. I didn't see myself growing and learning there. So I go back to him and I'd say, well, you know, that was okay, but it's not really, it's not the same. So he said, okay, try this guy. So I would try this guy, you know, and anyway, long story short, he finally said to me, look, if you're interested in something totally different, uh, why don't you go check out Kimeta Sensei? And they had known each other since the 60s, since uh, Kimeta Sensei first arrived in Toronto. Um, because they're, uh, again, he's passed away now. Uh, Masami Tsuroka Sensei was the father of Canadian karate. And any Japanese martial artists that came to Canada, they would come to Toronto typically, uh, not exclusively, but typically, and they would stay with him. And Kimeta Sensei did that. So my karate teacher, as it turns out, and Kimeta Sensei had known each other since the 60s. So he said, look, go and check this out. And, you know, it's, it's that classic story. As soon as I got there, uh, saw Sensei teaching, Kimeta Sensei teaching, uh, saw the dojo, saw the people, saw the training. I thought, this is it. I have to join this. Um, and there was overlap for about 10 years. Uh, and finally, I, I just realized that I had to commit to one or the other. You know, if I really wanted to try to achieve something and try to strive for higher levels, I wasn't going to do it chasing two rabbits. Okay. So, so uh, Kimeta, uh, you know, re honestly, I mean, credit to his character and uh, uh, it, it was, it was an easy choice for me and no offense to anybody, but it, that was an easy choice for me to make, to follow Kimeta Sensei. Okay. Look, you're doing a Jacques Pai and taking over my interview. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, tip, tip of the hat to him. <laughs> Your Aikido, you, how long did you spend with Kimura Sensei? Uh, so directly, you know, taking classes yep. four times a week kind of thing, 25 years. 25 years. Your Aikido and Kimura Sensei's Aikido is different. Yeah. Right? And, but you still acknowledge him as Absolutely. your teacher. Every conversation, everything you start with, it's always Kimura Sensei is my first teacher or my teacher. He is my only teacher, I would say. Yes. Um, so how come your Aikido is not like his? Well, that's a good question. I, I can't imagine that it would be. It, it's kind of funny. I come at it from a different perspective, you know? You know, I would, say, uh, I would say to people that would expect it to be the same, you know, f just as an, as an analogy, you know, we all have parents. We all love our parents. We all, you know, I hope respect our parents, but we are not our parents you probably don't think the same way your parents think. I don't. They came from a different age, a different time, a different place. Their experience is not my experience. My interpretation of the world is not their interpretation of the world because the world is different. I mean, I see this happening with my own children today. Their interpretation of the world today is not my interpretation. Now, Interestingly, they struggle with that. I, I don't necessarily struggle with it because I, I think it's a natural thing. Of course, they're going to have a different interpretation. So not only do we have different experiences and different interpretations and different insights and different minds of our own, you know, we have different physical selves. You know, Kimeta Sensei's physical structure and my physical structure are not the same. I mean, how could I move like him? It, it, it would be physically impossible. Okay, for, those of you, for those of you who don't know Kimera Sensei, he's shorter than me, but solid. But tough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But, tough. but thank you. Thank you. No, no, you're pretty <laughs> tough too. <laughs> but I mean, uh, so, so there's the whole physicality aspect as well. I mean, there's the history aspect, there's the physicality aspect. And then there's, there's the kind of interpretation, I, I would argue. You know, we, we would say mind and body are connected. So my thoughts, my interpretation, my approach comes out in my Aikido, comes out in my physical movements. I mean, it's quite clear. And we can look at all kinds of top teachers to see something of their personality in their Aikido. And Kimeta Sensei's Aikido is very much like his personality. He is very strong, very direct, very definitive. That's for his Christ, Aikido. For Christ's sake, can you stop hitting the table? It's shaking the camera. 
Sorry. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Um, look, uh, the, the reason the reason I ask is, and and one of the reasons I've called the, these series of interviews keep the hash keep the flame alive. I meant to say hashtag, but um, <laughs> it's it, it's people are changing history, hmm. and they're being selective, and uh, you know I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, my Aikido is nothing like my uncle's, who's my first teacher. And, yeah. and, you know, but he wouldn't expect it. He wouldn't want it. How could it be, though? Yeah. But, I, but a lot of people are changing history to suit their narrative. Hmm. How do and, you mean? And, I mean, I don't want to name names, but... No, no, I, I won't name, name, name names, but there's people who will just cut out who their first teacher was. Oh, or, I see what you mean. Or, yes. you know, maybe for political reasons, personal yeah. reasons, or whatever, but... Yeah. Uh, like you said, you know, it's like, it's like not acknowledging your parents. Yeah. You, you need to acknowledge your parents. You need yeah. to be true to who you were or who you, who you are. Yeah. yeah. And, and a loving parent would respect that. Exactly. Don't exactly. you think? Yeah. Like a parent, you know, you hear, I mean, you've heard probably far more than I. You, you hear these stories of Aikido teachers that say, hey, listen, if you go and train with uh, Joe Tambu Sensei, you should ask my opinion. And I, I just, I'm blown away by that. What do you mean, ask my opinion? I mean, you know, we're all adults. We're all human beings. We're all trying to get along and get better at this art. What do you mean I have to ask your opinion? I'm not, you know, I'm not, you don't own me. Uh, but, but I think those people, uh, they're probably striving for respect that they're not getting. A personal question, right? Yes. So you never lived in Japan, spent long times in, in Japan, like Paya Sensei or whatever, okay? So, yep. but you do the right thing by all the teachers. Where did you learn that? Uh, you know, ah, that's a good question. I, you know, my first answer is to say, I don't know. But really, where did I learn it? I learned it probably from watching my own teachers, you know? Uh, Kimeda Sensei, I've, I've been very lucky. Kimeda Sensei invited all of the top teachers. And I was at a, at a rank at the time that, you know, I, was, I could be helpful in the dojo and helpful to him. And I could see how things happened and how things should be. Mm. Um, and so you just, you just do it. You don't, you know. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I mean... Ultimately, what it comes down to, I think, is, is just paying attention. And that's one of those key things that we're trying to learn in Budo. So if, if you come to my dojo, if I say, please come and teach a seminar at my dojo, and I don't pay attention to you, well, you're never coming back. You know, I mean, I have to look at where are your shoes? Are they ready for you to leave? Where is your bag and who's got it? Who is folding the hakama? Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Are you bored of this company? Like, I have to pay attention to that. And that, all of that, all of that, all of I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. All no, no, of no, that, no, all of that is training. All of that is Budo training. It's not just let's get on the mat and do a thousand breakfasts. Thank you. I don't want to do that. Every moment you spend with a teacher. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I don't hear this so much in Aikido, but uh, I remember in karate, we used to hear this, you know, uh, on the mats, I'm Sensei Johnston, but off the mats, I'm Chris. Mm, I don't know. Don't worry Kimeda for me. Sensei, no. I, you know, Kimeda Sensei is Kimeda Sensei. Whether we're on the mats or I'm driving him and another teacher somewhere or I, whatever I could be doing for him, yep. it's Kimeda Sensei. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. Um, now, we're going to move on, right? I'm going to come yeah. back to some of the things you said later, but we're going to move oh. on for now. What, what made you, hold on, I'm going to say something and you can just um, tear me down if I'm wrong, okay? Yeah, I not likely. I heard that you studied Japanese just so you could translate Aikido Shugyo. Is that true? Yeah, so it's half true, yeah. Are you mad? I, uh, I had been, as I said, I'd been doing karate for a long time. And uh, I always thought, wouldn't it be great to be able to read things directly in Japanese? And uh, so at, when I finished my degree, I went back in the summer. Uh, my wife was, was continuing her studies. 
So, because I had nothing else to do, I took a Japanese class. And 12 years or so later, I stopped taking Japanese classes. Uh, but in the meantime, I had found one particular teacher who I kept going back to. And she helped me, she said, like, you know, you can do this. And I said, well, sensei, I'm, I'm not fluent in Japanese. She said, that's okay. You know some basics, you have a structure, uh, you know how to use dictionaries. Um, so she helped me with, uh, the first book I did actually was a karate book. Uh, and I, I just so thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I, you know why? I don't know. It seemed like a puzzle to me, putting it all together and getting it right, you know? I think you'll be then, loopy, personally. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, in, I, I want to say 94, I'm not so good with dates. I want to say 94, uh, I was in Tokyo for the summer studying Japanese and taking Mustard Sensei's classes at the Hombu Dojo. And he's the one, I, I saw him say it on your show already. He's absolutely right. He's the one that gave me these books and he said, look, translate this book. And I said, mm. great, I'm off on, I'm on it. And uh, so to translate Shugyo or to work through Shugyo, you know, it was a two year project because I was so crappy at doing it. I wouldn't, so. I wouldn't go, I know, everyone lauds your translation. Yeah. And then, and the other books in, in the Shindokan stable? Yeah, so, so far, uh, so Aikido Shugyo, Aikido Jinsei, uh, both with Pai Sensei. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I, I had a hand in helping Pai Sensei get his own book, uh, Uchideshi, which is just recently out, uh, getting that together. He, and I feel so, you know, maybe ashamed is, is not heavy enough word. He actually passed that to me years and years and years and years ago. And uh, it just, it was, you know, it got edited and it sat there and, sat, and finally I just thought, I have to get this done. So that came out. Uh, and there are a couple of karate books as well. Um, the first translation I did called Kempo Karate Do. Uh, and then I did the last karate teacher that I was, uh, I would say I was under was a, a very, very uh, well-respected and, and well-known teacher in the U.S. called William Dimitrich Sensei. And he had a, a biography he wanted uh, to try to publish. So I, I was able to help him with that as well. So why, why the move from translator to publisher? Uh, seriously, just by default. Uh, what I found is that, you know, even with Shugyo, which, you know, I mean, I, I would say that's probably uh, the first major book I did. I think that's fair to say. Uh, I would say no mainstream publisher is, is really willing to pick it up. I mean, the market generally for those companies, it's way too small. So I, I, by default, I had to start figuring out how to publish a book. I'm going to diagnose you as being obsessive compulsive. So okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, now, this is something I want to run by you. Yeah. Okay? Um, the... All, all, all the stories that are told uh, in martial arts books are like the fish that got away. Okay, I'm not talking about any one book in particular. Okay. Right? Um, and, you know, we, we, we make the mistake of believing the storyteller. Right. And then everything that follows uh, is false if the storyteller was not accurate or true. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you want me to give you an example? Uh, sure. Okay. So, all right. Uh, uh, Homer, who wrote the Iliad, right? Yeah. He lived about three, four, five hundred years after the fall of Troy, if he lived at all. Mm -hmm. And he wrote, or was meant to have written, the Iliad about that ten-year war. Three, four, five hundred years afterwards. Right. Being a blind, illiterate poet. Okay, yeah. so you tell me how accurate that was. And the Iliad forms the culture and the education of the Greco-Roman uh, culture and by yeah. extension, the Western civilization. Mm -hmm. So we're basing so much 
of what we believe in, of right and wrong, what is heroic, what is not, what is comradeship, uh, on, on the workings of a blind illiterate who wasn't even around at that time. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? So, so no, how, how do I, you believe the storyteller? Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, in terms of my own experience as the blind illiterate in this case, uh, it's, it's a burden. You know, I, I got to say, I, I feel that weight on my shoulders when I'm sitting down working through a translation. It's absolutely a burden. Uh, because I know that the version you're reading is six hands from the originator. You know, uh, Shoda, Shoda Gozo might have an, an idea in his mind that he wants to convey. Well, as soon as he's written it down, it's already lost something. And then when I take it and I read the Japanese, you know, my mind interprets it in a certain way. And then when I write it down in English, right, once I translate it, it's again already lost something. So I'm really cognizant of that. And I, I strive, uh, you know, I, I would say mightily. This is a, probably the number one uh, thing that I'm, I'm, I'm wary of in translating, that I don't change. I mean, listen, sometimes you have to change the word, but you can't change the intent. Okay. Can, can I, the can trick I give is, you The trick is to know what the heck is the intent. <laughs> All right. Let, let me give you an example, right? So yeah. Suchiroku, um, Kancho Sensei always used to say that. What's that mean? Shuchuryoku. Uh, yeah. Uh, the short answer, short answer. <laughs> well, so fo the short answer is not the right translation, I guess. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, short so answer. Focus, focus, focus right? power. Focus, focus power. power. Okay. I always was thought or heard of it translated as the concentration of power. Yeah. I like that. Okay. All right. But now, I, here, let me throw another one at you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. But then reading somewhere, I read it was the power of concentration. No. Exactly. So yeah, no. That little, that little flip, yeah. then three words flipped over. A lot of people argue it's the same thing. No, it's but, not. Can, you, can no. you? Okay, so two things now. Can you talk about power of concentration, concentration of power? and then whatever else you want to. Yeah, so uh, power of concentration is a mental aspect. It, you know, concentration, I believe, you know, when we talk about it in that sense, colloquially, that's a, that's a mental exercise. Concentration of power is unifying, tying together, bringing all of the energies in your body and putting it as, you know, this is a, f a famous line from Kimeda Sensei, one single pinpoint. That's shuchu ryoku. Okay, I, I would, I could argue the point, but that's not important. Okay, so now. Well, another, we'll... another example, another example of that is Kihon Dosa. So I wrote a, a piece recently for our own website. Well, I would say maybe two years ago, who knows, uh, about this, you know, these movements that we do. And in English, we call them basic movements. But in English, the word basic doesn't, it's not the right word. I mean, kihon means basic. Okay, uh, I would go with that. But kihon dosa are not basic movements because in English, the word basic means kind of simple, easy, meh, you know, no big deal. And a lot of people, you see it more than most teachers in, in dojos all over the world. A lot of people practice kihon dosa that way. Well, we we'll just do these movements and okay, now we can get to real Aikido. But if you take the word kihon, and instead of calling it basic, you call it foundational. That changes everything. Yep. And it's not a mistranslation. Kihon can mean a foundation. So, you know, if it's, it's, it's a really important thing. It seems like, well, you're just playing with words. No, I, I, you're, yeah, I, I agree. So going back to the word, the word, okay? Yeah. As in... The word handed down from a teacher. Handed yeah. From, you know, uh, how, how much should we hold in store? Look, let me, let me tell you something. I, I've never said this in an interview before. In a way, Sensei told me and a few others a story about Kancho Sensei. Yeah. Right? 
and it was it's not a story I'll repeat. And I may have heard it. We we laughed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I asked Inoue Sensei privately, "Was that true?" And he says, "I don't know if it's true, but it, Kanjo Sensei did tell it to me. It's true. Yeah. He told it to me. He doesn't know if it's true, but he said, and he added, Kanjo Sensei liked to hear people laugh. He liked to yeah. make people laugh. Yeah. So he would, and and we all learn from storytellers, don't we? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but it's hard as the student to know, well, I mean, it's not hard. I mean, if you spend enough time with a teacher, certainly you will know what's a story, what's not a story. You know? Uh, I remember taking Kimeda Sensei's Kenshu classes, for example. He would do weekly uh, Kenshu classes. And I remember, you know, students would say, listen, I, I just, I'm not sure where he's going with this. But it's because they didn't come to the last three classes. Mm. Right? You need to see this story over time. And you need to understand the teacher to understand his story or her story. Uh, that, that opens a whole other can of worms, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It, uh, you know, because, um, ah, you know, in, in Iwamaru, they say that what Saizo Sensei teaches is exactly what all Sensei taught. And it never changed. And, you know, look, I, I know someone who was a, a deshi. Yeah. And Taito Sensei once said to him, all your senpai expect me to say, stay the same person I was 20 years ago. I've yeah. changed. Yeah. My kiddo's changed. But how and, could it not? I mean, that's our discussion from before. Yep. I mean, I look, mean how look could Taito's aikido be exactly what Ueshiba's was? Look, look at Shindo Musuryu Jodo. They say mm -hmm. it hasn't changed from the time when uh, uh, Guno Monosuke, whatever, if I got his name right, right fought yeah. Musashi. Yeah. Come on. And, and in the last 50 years, they're talking about the Fukuoka style and the Tokyo style. No. And it hasn't changed over, you know, it's... I agree it's, with you. Practically what, what not possible. Is, sorry? It's practically not possible. Yep. And, and, and I would give an example of Gozo Shioda. We've all seen those old videos of him. I think it's from 1960 or 62. Yep. Uh, in in the the Tsukudo Hachiman Dojo. Yep. I mean that that Aikido. I mean, sounds maybe offensive to say. It's essentially a brawl. I mean, just look at it. But the Aikido he was doing near the end of his life is nothing like that. No. So okay, good. Now, the the question of may, many teachers say, okay, this is what I did. This is what I had to go through. Yeah. But now I'm doing it like this. So mm. do it like this. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, that's a good question. I, I've actually had uh, conversations with, with, and maybe with yourself, uh, with other top teachers about that. Do students today have to go through what their teachers went through to, to achieve the levels that their teachers have achieved. Is that, I mean, am I reading the question? Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, my, I, I want to say, I want to hope that that's not the case because if it is the case, then we're doomed. It's up to us as teachers to find that way. I mean, that's the challenge of a teacher. How do I bring this person, these people, to this level without having to recreate, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm gonna put words in your mouth, so please correct me. I'm sure you don't teach the way you trained as a young person. No, there's lots of legal liabilities and insurance yeah. problems. Yeah. It's so true, no, it's but, so true. But that's, that's to my undying uh, regret. Hmm. Seriously, look, uh, let, let, me, let me put it this way, right? Uh, my first time in the Yoshinkan, um, yeah. uh, I was stuck in the course the, for a couple of months, and we're doing Yokomeuchi. And so, of course, at the end, you've got to do this, right? You've yeah. done that too. And yeah. my partner was Ando Sensei. Okay. okay. And we tried to kill each other. And, you know, it's... but. That was the conditioning. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. now I see people with perfect, perfect technique 
Yeah. But they cannot stop a block. Yeah. Because there's no conditioning. So you talked about mind, body, and spirit. The, the, the mind is there. The yeah. spirit is kind of, eh, and the body's yeah. not. The body's yeah, not. and the spirit, so you're right. I'm with so you. You could take your best shot, and I'm sure you have at Kimera Sensei, and he stopped you in your tracks. Yes? Not even a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you got, you got a lot of people who are half his age who will not be able to stop your strike. Right. And they should. Yeah. Yeah. And I think to going back to your analogy, mind, body, spirit, the body will give the spirit. The training of the body will give the spirit. And that's where we're failing I, now. Yeah, I'm totally with you. But I would also argue you're one, you know, not that you need this, but you're one of those teachers that is doing it. Like I, I've taken your classes. I know you're not teaching in that way and you're teaching at a far higher level than probably you were ever taught. Because you come up with, a, like, it's endless, the number of varieties of ways of teaching simple things that you present to classes. That, like, that's a great example for those of us who are pretending to be teachers. Uh, that's a great example for us. We need but, to find those ways. But we're not talking about the teachers, we're talking about the student. Yeah, but the your, of the your student. ability to do that is what brings students further. So then, but, you know, how do we get the spirit, going back to the thing that's missing, right? Without, you know, wreaking violence on people's bodies. I, I don't think we need to do that today. Don't we? I mean, you went through it. I went through it in karate. But I don't want to do it. I don't even want to do it to people. No, I, I don't. I don't. But does that, does that fail us? Like, you know, we, we talk about kids today, right? Saying. Yeah, no, I don't think it fails. Sorry, I'm cutting you up. I don't think it no. fails us. It challenges us. And we need to rise to that. You know, uh, I, was in, I was in the Yoshinkan in 83, and uh, we're in the dormitory, and Takino Sensei, we're all talking. Takino Sensei walks in, and we go quiet. And he says, uh, what are you talking a, about? What are you saying? Nothing. Uh, nothing, nothing. He goes, no, come on, what are you talking about? And we said, oh, you know, why do we have to do Swadiwaza? Why do we have to, you know, it's horrible, it's shocking, it's not practical, etc." And he went on his toes like this. Yeah. And he walked like that and he says, till you can do that, don't complain about Swariwaza. Hmm. You know what I did? I did Swariwaza till I could do that. Yeah. And, and you know, but it, it takes, maybe I'm obsessive like you, but uh, you, you, you need to push yourself. Yeah. And you cannot and push someone who doesn't want to be pushed. I could not agree more. So, could not but, agree more. But by it, virtue it, of the fact it, that people come to your dojo willingly, they're, they're, I mean, they're not asking to be beaten, you know, I mean, there, there are limits, but they are asking to be pushed and yeah. I'm happy to push. Yep. And, and I guess it's different courses for horses and yep. horses for courses, right? So yep. um, we're, we're in corporate talk, we're talking in parallels, I think. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I think as teachers, we have to wear some of the blame. We're mm. trying to shortcut things, and I know I have from mm. some of my students, but there ain't no any, there isn't a shortcut. Well, <clears throat> so here's another example from uh, uh, Kimeda Sensei's Kenshu classes. Uh, you know, out of the blue, you, one day he would go, we all line up, and we expect him to lecture for 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, and he would say, okay, jump up, uh, so and so here, so and so there, so and so there, Juwaza, let's go. And we would do Juwaza for an hour and a half. And of course, we would be dead. Absolutely just completely exhausted. Uh, and the very next class, the, the, the next week, I'm sorry, for Kenshu, we would go from 25, 30 students to 10. So, you know, if you run your dojo that way, and even Sensei would say that, if I run my dojo this way, like you guys, you 10 will be good but we'll have to close. Yeah, so, so there's, you know, the, here's, here's the problem, right? Um, a lot of people who leave the Oshinkan model their classes, their dojos after the Kenshu or the Senshu yeah. Sei. Yeah. Right? What they forget is there's the Ipan class or the general yeah. class. Could and not that's agree a, with you more. That's a feeder into the Kenshu. Yep. And the Kenshu is then a feeder into the Senshu Sei and that into the Uchideshi or the Seiwanin. Yep. Could not agree when, more. When, 
Where's the feeder? Uh, so I think the feeder is Ipan. Yes. But the general class, for sure. So, so when I I'm teach... doing those, those different courses within a dojo and you need that. Yeah. Oh, that's, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's, that's kind of an interesting idea. But I'm sure, uh, you know, you, I, I mean, I know you have something of a structure in the dojo. So you have that feeder thing. I, I know that in my, my small dojo, I know these handful of people are really starting to achieve something. And I'm going to push them in a far harder way than I will what we might call the Ipan students. You know, because the, when they're in that stage, they'll just drop out if you push them too hard. Great. Great. Um, and you're not helping anybody with that. I mean, so, okay. Look, know, now me... we're back to the point of why are you teaching? Why are you running a dojo? So, okay, let, let me ask you something, right? Yeah. Form versus substance. Uh, okay. How, where do you want me to go with that? Well, your comment. I'll tell uh, you what I think and then you yeah. can shoot. Yeah. Uh, form is empty. I mean, we practice the form, but the substance has to be there. Without a substance, uh, it's, it's, you, you're just dancing. Okay, that, that, that's a sad indictment of 90% of the Aikido guy, no. Yeah, I probably would agree with you. I mean, how many times do you watch something and you think, I have to stop? Yep. stop watching it's just it's just not even watching it's not fulfilling yep you know so so who who as teachers do we're just providing the form at the moment we're not we're not providing the substance well so yeah that's a good i i see where you're going um i guess it's a question of when as well you know so when does this, the substance come it doesn't come, you know, so-and-so walks into the dojo, I show them how to bow, how to line them up, and now we start beating them up? Uh, I don't think so. No, no. Right? So substance has to come where is the question, but it has to come. I'm not sure I have the exact answer for that. No. Well, next time I see it you, really, it depends on the a couple of beers. We'll talk yeah. to everybody about a couple of beers. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's move on. Let's move on. But, you know, sure. form, form versus substance. Sorry, my, my take on it. Uh, yes, please. Form leads to substance. Hmm. Uh, but they, they have to coexist all the time. Yeah. If, if you have only substance, you cannot uh, go forward. You, you, you need that form to, to take the substance forward and to change. Well, it, and, you know. and this is coming from someone who, who used to do... Uh, and very, very, very old style, loose Yoshinkan style Aikido that I never progressed for 15, 20 years. I never progressed. Yeah. Until 1989, I went to the Yoshinkan. I spent six months there and my progress started then. Yeah. So I, I, know, yeah. I know the difference between. Yeah, and I, and I would agree with that, that, uh, that approach. And I mean, I might offer in his example, uh, you know, the kind of self-defense aspect of what we do. Uh, if, if all you're interested in is self-defense, you don't need Yoshinkan Aikido in terms of substance, right? I mean, it's, it's actually pretty easy to hurt another human being. You don't need to practice for 15, 20 years to figure that out. What you're figuring out over those years is how to apply that form so as not to hurt someone. Okay. Now, that would be at the foundation level. When I talk about form and substance, I'm talking about. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. Yeah, the, 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 the intent, the intent, yes. yeah. uh, you know, uh, you, you've been my weekend demonstrations. You see me smile. Yeah, no. Now, if, I, if I'm talking and telling a joke, maybe, but otherwise, no. And no. The, the, the intent is there. And that's the way I was taught. Yeah. And then the, the form and substance coexist and they drive each other. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm what I you. believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, now, people, I, I'm not allowed to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, the Takeda Sokaku Diaries, the oh, novel. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've got one question about it. Is it okay to ask you about it? Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, 
at some point in 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 a bar in Toronto, you told me about translating this, and yes. you told me about the number of days. Oh, sensei, uh, where Shiva Morihei trained under Takeda Sokaku, and this was. Can you can you? Uh, yeah. So I, more? I mean, uh, if I could do a shameless plug here, there's any publishers of you. <laughs> So this is a, a book written by uh, Tsumoto Yo, uh, who's quite a famous author in Japan. He writes historical fiction and, and, and exclusively on Japanese martial artists. Uh, the book is called Oni no Kanmuri, um, Devil's Crown, maybe not the greatest translation of the title. Uh, anyway, I, ha I received his, uh, his blessings to, to translate uh, this book. Um, there's been a glitch with the publishing and, and who and, and how to get it done. That's a backside. Uh, but we were talking about this book and it seems to me, so this is a, it's a historical fiction, just to be clear. Um, but one of the things uh, Tsumoto Yo is famous for is that when he makes a statement or implies something in his fiction, it's, it's, it's historically accurate. I mean, he's weaving a story around it, but the, the points that he makes are historically accurate. And it seems to me that the total days that uh, Ueshiba Sensei would have trained with Sokaku Takeda is probably about a month based on this novel. And in so total? we're talking, you know, 30 so, days. In, in total? Total. And from what I understand, Takeda Sokaku kept accurate account because of money. Absolutely accurate accounts. You signed every day. So, you know, those records should be somewhere. Um, so how much can you learn in 30 days? Yeah, uh, me personally, not much. I mean, it speaks, if anything, it speaks to his genius. And I mean, I'm certain, you know, he had some skills and techniques prior to. Um, uh, it would be, for me, it would be pretty difficult to, to get much out of 30 days. It would get me off and running. You know, like, is, is so many questions need to ask. I need to ask. <laughs> yeah. um, we, look, um, let, let's say, and all sense it was gifted, no yeah. doubt about it, right? Yeah. Um, but how much can you learn in 30 days? Yeah. Enough, but, enough to start a whole system? No, but maybe, maybe enough to integrate something into your prior knowledge. So, I mean, it's, it's so difficult to tell, you know, there are no... There are no video, uh, like, I mean, there is video, but it's, 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 it's really difficult to tell from what we have or what we've been able to see. And I can tell you myself, a number of times, even today, you see video of, you know, teacher X. And you look at it and you say, come on, those uke are diving, he, this is just not real. And then you feel teacher X, X's technique and you think, wow, I was completely wrong. So to judge him from video is, is maybe not the most fair thing either. Okay. So, so, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe history is wrong or, or the, the, the narrative is wrong. Um, but we all say that modern day Aikido came from Daitoryu. Yeah. Okay. No. I, um, I, we, I can't imagine that anybody would argue that today. Okay. So with 30 days of training. Yeah how much of Daitori was transmitted. And I, 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 like you said, it, it speaks volumes for O-sensei's um, ability, his martial ability. But it, does it matter? Does the source matter? Or is it more relevant in what you can do? Yeah, uh, so your first question, how much was trans, uh, transmitted? Well, not, not really much. I mean, by all accounts, a third. Uh, and I'm certainly no expert in Daitoryu, but I, I believe there are something like 12 controls in Daitoryu. Hmm. Well, we only do four. I mean, we do some other things too, but we have- I think I do five, I think. I, do, I yeah. think I do five, yeah. 
Kimeda Sensei has taught us up to seven, but in the Yoshinkan syllabus, really, there's four. So well, that's one third. Um, and as to the question as to, you know, does it matter? Well, it, what matters is the individual and what they bring to it. You know, it's not what you're given, it's what you take. Hmm. Chida Sensei said something very, very, very similar. So well done. Good, good. answer. Um, good. Not because he said it, but because it's a good answer. Okay, <laughs> now, um, you, you've met a lot of the top Yoshinkan teachers, yeah? And yeah, so really lucky. I'm gonna, you're very lucky. Um, I'm going to throw, and uh, from what I understand, you've been uke for a lot of them as well. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to throw some names at you, and I want your impression. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm ready. I, when, I, when I did this with Jacques, I said, you know, three words, and he went on like, you know. So. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to do something similar. <laughs> okay. What's we'll, we'll that? Um, Inoue Sensei. Ah, uh, un unknowable. Can I give an example? Yep. So I was doing uh, katate mochi. Katate mochi, I can't even remember the end of the technique because the katate mochi just blew my mind. Uh, you know, it's that classic, grab my wrist. So I grabbed his wrist and I'm not a big guy, but I'm a lot bigger than him. And I was a lot younger than him and stronger, I think physically. And I grabbed and he looked at me and kind of laughed, you know, he's like, that's it. And he said to me, you know, tsyoku, tsyoku, like strong, do it strongly, you punk, you know? <laughs> so I grabbed him and I thought, that's it, you are not getting anywhere. And he was gone. Yeah. And I was gone, like, but, but he just disappeared. It's unknowable, I, I mind blown. A similar experience, but yeah, Kimeda Sensei. Oh, Kimeda Sensei, uh, power, sharp, direct. Uh, when you when you first take his technique, uh, and I this sounds bad. I don't mean it in this way, Sensei. Uh, it, absolutely, it's going to hurt because you act you you don't realize the power that's going to hit you. And when it hits you, it, it's, it's just, it shocks you. Um, but at the same time, he can do things that are just so light, but just as powerful. He was off for uh, some time. He had a double shoulder surgery. And when he came back, I remember the first time I took Uke for him, uh, he, it was a both wrist grasp in this case. And he does this technique where he flips the hands over and takes you down. It's kind of a self-defense thing. And uh, he was in Kamae. I was in Kamae. I grabbed strongly both hands. And maybe in the back of my head, I thought, mm, not so strong, Johnson, because he just had double shoulder surgery, you know? And he did this light little move, pop. And he, I swear to God, I came off the ground three feet and he dropped me right into Seiza at his feet. I have no idea how that happened. All right. Takano Sensei. Takano Sensei. Uh, like really magically powerful. I, uh, little story there. One time he was teaching in Toronto and uh, at the last day of the clinic, uh, he said, oh, it's, it's open training, ask me anything. So I said to my partner, uh, great, great partner, Warren Gordon, I said, Warren, I'm going to ask him to take his uke. He said, no, you can't ask him. I said, yes, you could ask anything. So he came around. Darren Friend was there at the time. Uh, so I said, sensei, I'd like to take your uke. And he said, what technique? I said, yoko menuchi. And he said, and he put his hand on my chest. He pushed me back and he went like this. And I thought, oh, I got him. <laughs> and I wailed at him. Of course, he was gone. And I was just splat on the ground. But he was leaning over me, pointing in my face like this with that big smile of his. And he said, how'd that feel? And I said, I don't know. That was amazing. And he said, yeah. And he walked away. And then Darren came and he says, that's really cool, isn't it? And I said, yeah, that's amazing.
<laughs> you want to you want to try that on his mats in in Yamanashi? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah, at all. I I have. Okay, oh. Shida Sensei. Shida Sensei is just like a uh, a frustrating. Maybe that's the first word that comes to me, <laughs> and not because I would have thought something else, but yeah. No, no, because it, you have no clue what he's doing. You know, I, I mean, he did Nikajo on me once like this, not even closing his hands. And I kept thinking, why am I going down? You know, uh, and the more I study him, the more I, I try to steal some of, some of his approach. He, he said things to me that I only figured out like five years later. Yeah. It's like that little bomb he drops, eh? Uh, yeah. Muguruza Sensei. Muguruza Sensei, he is incredibly skilled and powerful. And, and I, I owe him, uh, you know, I, I would say I've only met him maybe three times, four times, but I, I really feel uh, uh, I, that I owe him. I had the chance uh, with Kimeda Sensei, we were in uh, Würzburg in Germany. And... Uh, Sensei was teaching the class and Mugurusa Sensei was the only teacher there of all the teachers who jumped in and took the class. And I had the chance to train with him as my, my partner in the class for an hour and a half. And he taught me so well and so graciously and so givingly during that class. I, I, I will never forget that class. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to speed it up a bit. Ando Sorry. Sensei, Ando Sensei. And, Ando Sensei, also brilliant. I love his speed. Uh, I love his sharpness. His, his, uh, his techniques are absolutely incredible. Like when, you know, he's done a number of clinics uh, at Kimeda Sensei's yeah. dojo, and I've had the chance to feel his technique a, a number of times. Um, I would say his, his, when he does the Kihon Waza, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Jacques Paye Sensei. Jacques Paye Sensei, I'm going to put him in the unknowable category. <laughs> the stuff he does, I, 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 don't know, I don't know how he's doing it. Mm. I mean, listen, I can make some guesses, but I'm, I'm just totally <laughs> guessing. Uh, but but I, I also, I will say, you know, so I would say similarly to Chira Sensei, uh, some of the things that I love about those two teachers, uh, you know, when Pai Sensei does a technique to me, and, I, you know, you can see it in other ukes as well, never do you get up kind of going, ah, okay, I got to do another one. I mean, you get up with this sense of joy. It's such a pleasure to feel that technique. I mean, it, that, it, that alone is motivating and you want to find out how is that being done so that you can pass that on. You've never had Chira Sensei put your jaw through the back of your head if no, you miss He's always been very kind to me and I have heard uh, yes. that he can be quite the killer. Yes, he has. Um, Robert Mustard Sensei. Wow. This is, uh, you know, the train is coming. It's <laughs> yeah. coming. <Yeah. laughs> uh, at the same time, you know, he's a bit of an enigma because, you know, he's this very, you know, he's a large physical presence and people are afraid of that. His mm -hmm. techniques are, are, can be huge, big movements, lots of power, but then he can do the most subtle, uh, you know, intriguing movement and have you baffled. So I, I would say I, I his Aikido is absolutely brilliant. And, you there know... You, yeah, sorry. There you go, people. A synopsis of who's who in Yoshinkan Aikido. I've got two more questions for you. Sure. One, the relevance of Uke and how important it is in Aikido. And is it the same in Karate? Ah, oh, that's a great question. Um, in karate, it's interesting. By and large, it's not my experiences, I should say. It's not the same. Because in karate, it is, it is a fight. You know, it's face to face. It's a fight. I'm, I'm not here to help you. I'm not here to help you learn, especially when we get to the, you know, sparring. Uh, I'm, I'm here to win. But in training? 
uh, in, in training, we push each other to the limits like that. And, and sometimes it gets a bit nasty. Uh, I, I would say, you know, it, it, even there, it's not the same as Aikido. Okay. And uh, but so in terms the, of the, sorry, go on. Go on. in terms of the question of how is, you know, the relevance of Avuke, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, I'm going to steal your words, right? Form and substance. You're not going to get substance if you don't have a, the right Uke. I, I really, I think Uke's job is indispensable in learning proper Aikido. But, but in that, I think people misunderstand what Uke's job is. My approach, and this is a kind of weird analogy, but I always thought of, you know, if you take a, a balloon, and you're going to blow up a balloon, and I put my energy into this balloon, and I blow it up, and I blow it up. Uke's job is to be on the skin of that balloon. That makes sense. They have to be perfectly matched with my energy. They can't be outside that skin. They can't be inside that skin. They have to be right on that skin. And that's a tough thing. You know, if I'm uke for Kimeda Sensei and I move too early, I, that I'm not on the skin of that balloon of his energy, uh, I'm going to get hurt. If I move too late, well, he's just not going to use me because I'm not, it, it, this is not a technique. Mm, I I agree a hundred percent, but uh, it yeah okay let, we'll leave it yeah no no it's good it's good it just opens a whole lot of things. Last question yeah. from me: um, yeah. Would you consider Aikido to be Budo? Yeah, no question. And, and no question. Okay, so no sorry. Uh, my. My problem is not whether people agree or disagree with that question. It yeah. is that a lot of Aikido teachers don't see the difference. Uh, don't see the difference in... As, in... as in they don't even understand what Budo is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can, so, I'm going to give them a definition. How's that? Yeah, please. Uh, and I'm crediting the source here. So the karate that I studied, uh, it's called the Chitoryu, and it's by a teacher... Uh, who was called Tsuyoshi Chitose. And his, his, one of his books I translated was my first book. And there's a line in there that, in which he defines Budo. And I've always loved it. He says, uh, to quote him, Budo is the stillness that results from discipline. So that feeling that you have in your center, that's Budo. That calmness in the face of adversity, that's Budo. That ability to take an opponent, and you know, this sounds so cliche, I, I don't mean to turn it this way, but, and, and to make them your friend, that's Budo. But how do you get that? You don't get that from a position of weakness. You okay. get that from a position of strength. So we go back to the earlier question, how do, you, how do we train that? How do we teach that? Yeah. I, I, that's a, it's a good question. I, and I'm not sure I have the answer I, other than, you know, to, to know in your heart who and what you are. And, and if that aligns with the Budo concept or that, you know, that's certainly my concept of Budo and then model that and teach that as you go. I mean, this is not a short term process. You're not going to learn this in a week. Le leaving, leaving all the technique aside, right? Yeah. People talk about Kamai and the value of Kamai and all that. And, and what you said, you know, what Kancho Sensei said, if someone comes to you as an enemy, you turn them and make them your friend. Yeah. But unless you can stand, stand your ground and tell someone to fuck off. Yeah. Pure and simple and make mm. them believe it. Mm. You ain't going to make them your friend. You there need to stand to be, ground. There has to be substance. Yeah. Behind that pointing finger. Yeah. And, and that's where, that's what I feel we're lacking. Yeah. That's what Aikido is lacking. I'm not even talking technique here. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you. That, that kind of, you know, as you said, in, in here, this is not a, an external thing. This is in here. Yeah. And I think of the top teachers that I've, you know, had the pleasure of being with, they all have it. In, when, when I was, 
and I've talked to Robert about this. I've talked to Jacques about this as well. And, you know, when I first went to the ocean camp in the 80s, I was afraid. Hmm. I was afraid. I wasn't, uh, it was, you know, I wasn't afraid of consciousness. I hardly saw him. He didn't hardly touch us. I was afraid of everyone else. Takano yeah. Sensei, Chida Sensei, um, Nakano Sensei, Sakurai Sensei, all of them. We were afraid of them. We were afraid of the Uchideshi, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel that when I walk into any Aikido dojo now. Oh, it's interesting, eh? Because I'm, I'm laughing because when I first joined Kimeda Sensei's dojo, I was afraid of him. I mean, I would say I'm still afraid of him. Yeah. No, sure. really. Like when Never he calls mind. me up and says, you know, Chris, we're doing this, you know, whatever. He's not telling you what the technique is. I mean, he's just going to do something. So yep. get ready. Yeah. And it's quite a fearful experience. So that, that's the substance I'm talking about. Yeah. How do, how do we bring that back? So, yeah, that's a good question for a few beers. And I think, okay. I think, but I think, again, I would say it's a challenge for us. It's not by, you know, it's not by the means that you went through. And it's not by the means that I went through on, in karate either. I don't think we can do that today. It's not the same. It's not the same world. We're not in the same times. So Your challenge and my challenge is to find the answer to that. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Look, um, uh, Obata Sensei is very, very famous. He always tells yeah. me that you have to find balance between, yeah. um, you know, hard and soft, uh, what works and what teaches um, dojo life, family life. And he said to me, I don't have that balance. Hmm. So, but, but, you know, th that balance is fluid. Yeah. It's not something set in stone. It's fluid. And, and it changes as we change. And people yeah. need to realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Okay. Chris, um, running out of time. It's been a okay. great, talk, a great talking to you. Finally pinned you down like the Yeti. Um, now, in my interviews, um, you get the last say. Uh, listen, just, there's nothing to say. Just focus, train hard, uh, keep, keep your you know, eyes on the prize, right? Um, in terms of some of the things that we've talked about today, I, I would, my recommendation, and, and I give this recommendation knowing that I've been absolutely, you know, incredibly lucky. If at all possible, uh, as a student of any any do, not even just a budo, uh, find the right teacher and stick with them. Don't jump around. You're, you're, cutting, you're selling yourself short. If you have the wrong teacher, that's a, that's a different thing. But if you have the right teacher, do what you can to stay with them. I mean, if, if that means you drive two hours to the dojo, you drive two hours to the dojo. I mean, it's, how committed are you? You want something or you don't want it? You know? Um, so for those people who are sort of maybe on the fence, you need to decide, I think, is this the right teacher for me? And if it is, then you need to commit. You know, okay. I, my wife knows if, if Kimeda Sensei calls me, I'm going to help him. I mean, you know, I'm not going to dump her on the side of the street or anything, but it, 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 that's the commitment. Um. I know I said that was the last question, but I have one more. I'm going to throw your question back at you. Okay. Where, and and uh, I, I said I wasn't going to talk about Yoshinkan politics or whatever, but I'm going to talk about Yoshinkan as a Ryu. Where yeah. do you see Yoshinkan Aikido in five years, 10 years? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Yoshinkan, I, I, unlike some people, I see it flourishing. Uh, we're, we're now in a kind of, process where you see different groups cropping up, uh, different teachers splitting off, whatnot. Uh, honestly, that's, that's growth happening. You know, when you, when you see a, a tree, it's not always just one thing, right? There's all kinds of branches and we call it a tree. And that's what's happening to Yoshinkan right now. I'm actually encouraged. Oh. I mean, the center may be splitting off and there may be different centers. Uh, but I, but I think we're, we're vibrant and we're growing. You Brilliant know? answer. Yeah. Chris Johnson sensei, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Everyone. My next interview on hashtag keep the flame alive will be a panel of three police officers, uh, two serving one 
retired and we're going to talk about um, Aikido and not, not just the technique, but the mentality and what it has to offer law enforcement. Os, thank you. Os. Os. Ah, sorry, people. Chindokanbooks.com. We're going to have a, another promotion and uh, compliments of Chris Johnson Sensei. Pay attention. It'll be all, all the details will be on this. Thank you. Os.